In this section, we begin the study of uh, invariant subspaces in order to study uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So, first off, the image of uh, a set U uh, <clears throat> under a mapping T is denoted by T of U and this is all points of the form T times U where little u is an element of big U. So <clears throat> this um, just just to distinguish here the uh, range of T is T of the entire vector space V but U can be smaller and so that's what distinguishes it from the range as we've seen before um, and also typically in this class we will look at this the image of a subspace so we will look at u as a subspace and in that case um, it's easy to check that the image of u is going to be a, a subspace as well and we'll also be doing all this um, for operators because this chapter is all about operators so suppose we have an operator t then we say a subspace u is uh, invariant under t if it gets mapped back into itself. So in other words, if the image of u is contained back in u again. And, and so uh, maybe it's worth emphasizing that uh, this is typically not equal, just contained in. Um, it, it might be equal, but uh, it's often strictly smaller. So based on this uh, definition, if you want to check if u is invariant, what you need to do is pick an arbitrary um, element of u and check that t of it is back in u again. Okay, so there's another way to think about uh, invariant subspaces that's useful and it uses the idea of a restriction operator. So suppose we take t to be our operator again and if u is a subspace of v um, <clears throat> then the restriction of T to this uh, subspace is denoted with a, a bar and then a subscript U. And this is going to be a map from U to V. And it's defined by uh, whatever T did. So um, this T without the decoration is defined on all of V. So in particular, it's defined on some uh, subspace. So, and so that's just how we use it to uh, describe or, or define what the restricted operator is. OK, so with this idea, Uh, u is invariant uh, under T
if and only if uh, the restricted operator is an operator on U. So again, this means that the range of T restricted to U is contained in U. <clears throat> so invariant subspaces are useful because they allow us to break down the full space V into smaller chunks and look at how T acts on each of those smaller chunks. Uh, and that makes T easier to understand. So, uh, we have a mini proposition, sort of an example. And that just tells us um, about some of uh, the, the basic invariant subspaces that, that we already know. So the trivial space, V, the null space, and the range of T are all invariant. And so this is easy enough to see. So T of zero, well, there's only one thing in that set and it's zero and zero gets mapped to zero. So the image of zero, uh, the image of the trivial vector space is always just going to be itself. Um, and then if I look at T of V, since the codomain is V, um, the range is going to be contained in the codomain. So that one's clear enough. Um, and then if we look at the null set, T of the null set, well, the null set is everything that T sends to zero. So T of the null set is exactly the trivial space. And the trivial space is contained in the null space of T because the null space is, uh, is a vector space. And then if we look at the uh, range of T, so this is T of everything, then as was pointed out before, that's a subset of V. And so now if I apply T to both sides of that containment, then T of the range is contained in T of V. And T of V is just the range of T.